sponsored by Displate. Okay, there has been a ton, a ton of chatter about the iPhone 12 lately. That's thanks to the deluge of rumors from the likes of John Prosser, Guo Mingqi, Mark Gurman, Max Weinbach, and others. I've covered some of it before, so hit subscribe and check it out. But this time, I want to focus on the iPhone 12 display. See, reports are saying that Apple is going all in on OLED across the full range of iPhone 12 devices. No more LCD on the base model, OLED only for the Pro. Also, that Apple is going 120 hertz or Pro Motion on the high end, which means that that will become the exclusive Pro only feature. But there's also been a lot of confusion about what those things really are, what it all means, and how precisely it's all going to work. So let's dive into that. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is the iPhone 12 display. Rumor has it. Now, I feel like I spent half of my life on this channel explaining organic light emitting diode, or OLED technology. And that's because it's so brilliant, but so, so flawed. Brilliant in that, instead of using a backlight like LCD, it literally emits its own light. Think of the difference between a curtain and the sun. If it's a really bright day and you close the curtain, the curtain is still being lit up from behind and there's still light leaking in around its edges. But when the sun comes up, it's bright. And when the sun goes down, it's dark. LCD is like the curtain. OLED is like the sun. When an OLED pixel goes dark, it goes super inky black dark, even and especially if other pixels are still lit up. And the way OLED is used on phones, it can also get so much brighter than LCD. So you also get really white whites. That all means you see far more detail in the shadows and in the highlights than regular displays. Much of the chagrin of the LCD marketing lobby, that makes OLED about the only current display technology that provides for real high dynamic range HDR experiences on phones. But OLED is also deeply, tragically flawed. For example, it can color shift off axis. In other words, as you turn it, it can look more reddish on worse displays and even still a little bluish on good ones. And it can color shift over time as well as the blue subpixels die off faster than the red and green ones, which is why OLED on phones typically uses what's called a pentile arrangement, doubling up on some subpixels rather than the straight up red, green, blue stripe used on LCD displays. And that screws with the math when determining things like actual resolution and display densities. OLED can also burn in or just persist too long at times. The brightness isn't always consistent either, especially at the larger end of the mobile spectrum. Dimming is sometimes handled by pulse width modulation, which some people claim they can see and annoys them. And for as much power as OLED can save when it's dark, wow, can they use it up when they go bright which is why companies, including Apple, are investing in next generation display technologies like mini LED and micro LED. And if you wanna see a video on those, just let me know in the comments. Another problem with OLED historically is that only Samsung has had a really good process for producing it for phones, which is very different than producing it for TVs. Even then, capacity for that process has still been severely limited, and Samsung charges a premium to fabricate those panels, especially for Apple, who always wants it done to their own exacting specifications, and sometimes even with different materials. So, what's changed? What would let Apple get not only the increased capacity to put OLED panels on the base model iPhone this year, historically the most popular iPhone, if not the most popular phone in the world, period, but also at the base model iPhone price, which is a couple or several hundred bucks cheaper than the pro models. Well, rumors point to BOE. Originally Beijing Oriental Electronics, now just BOE, has been making OLED panels for other companies like Huawei for a while now. And apparently their latest process is both good enough for Apple and cheap enough for the base model iPhone. In fact, there are even reports that Samsung is in talks to use BOE panels for future less expensive phone models as well. And which if you follow the industry is hella ironic given not so long ago, Samsung was suing BOE for basically, how do I say this? Allegedly borrowing Samsung's OLED process to begin with. And that, you know, might just explain why they're both good and cheap enough for Apple and even Samsung to use them on the mid to lower end of their phone lineups. And there could still be differentiation between the base and pro displays anyway. For example, the iPhone 12 BOE panels could be HDR like the iPhone 10 was, while the iPhone 12 Pro panels could push further into XDR, extreme dynamic range, like Apple has started with the iPhone 11 Pro panels. And of course, 
the pros could have ProMotion. Apple introduced ProMotion with the second generation iPads Pro, the 10.5 inch and 12.9 inch models in June of 2017. Now, most people get excited about ProMotion because it offers up to 120 hertz refresh rate, which is twice that of current iPhones. But the key and oh so cool thing about ProMotion isn't the 120 hertz part, it's the up to part. Hear me out. ProMotion isn't a high refresh rate technology, it's an adaptive refresh rate technology. ProMotion can ramp up from 60 hertz to 120 hertz for things like buttery, silky, smooth scrolling and Apple Pencil rendering, but it can also ramp down to 30 hertz, even 24 hertz for things that don't require as much refresh, like a TV show or a movie. One of the key advantages to 120 hertz is that it's evenly and easily divisible into most other North American frame rates. But, and yeah, there's always a but, 120 hertz uses more power. So ProMotion tries to balance that out by using 60, even 30 when it can save power. There's even a ProMotion dispatcher that handles all the different refresh rate requests because the iPad can have multiple apps on the display at the same time. So one app could ask for 120 hertz for scrolling, another for 24 hertz for a movie, and ProMotion will just figure it all out. And at no point will you get the soap opera effect from artificial motion smoothing, or the uncanny valley, where it looks so close to natural, but not quite natural, ends up just looking unnatural. Problems that have plagued some other high frame rate implementations for a long time now. So if the iPad Pro got ProMotion all the way back in 2017, why is it the iPhone Pro is only rumored to be getting it now, in 2020? Well, in an acronym, OLED. Pretty much immediately after the iPads Pro got ProMotion on their LCD displays in June of 2017, the iPhone X switched to an OLED display in September of 2017, and ProMotion just wasn't an option for OLED, at least not back then. Over the last year or so, we've started seeing some Android phones come with 90 hertz, even 120 hertz or more displays. The implementations aren't as elegant yet. Samsung, in order to preserve battery life, shipped with a 120 hertz capable display, but enabled only at lower resolution, turning it off if you stepped back to a higher resolution. Google drifted between 90 hertz and 60 hertz, sometimes even just based on ambient brightness at the time, unless you went into settings and forced it to stay on. But it's tough to see Apple shipping anything that isn't just always on, transparent to the end user, and doesn't just utterly shred battery life. Which is almost certainly why we've also seen reports from John Prosser that, while the 12 Pro hardware will ship fully capable of 120 hertz, whether Apple enables it in firmware or not will depend entirely on how much of a hit battery life takes if and when it's on. Now, Apple has been shipping dynamic refresh rates on OLED displays for a couple of years already on the Apple Watch. Apple started shipping them with the Series 4, but they really came into their own with the Series 5. They use LTPO, which is yet another acronym, but also a new kind of polysilicon and oxide display technology, but not to ramp up to 60 hertz, to ramp all the way down to one hertz, one frame per second. That combined with other things like new display drivers, power management circuits, and ambient light sensors are what lets the always on display work without also shredding trashing battery life. And that all shows two things. One, from watch to iPhone to iPad to XDR, Apple display has just some mad, mad skills. And two, it's not a bunch of gobbledygook letters or single technologies or terms like promotion that makes for these kinds of capabilities and experiences. It's all of those things working together from the silicon, through the software, and into the hardware that makes it happen. And while some people are arguing about whether 120 hertz or higher even makes a difference, and if most people will even notice or care about it, I'll just say this. To me, it's like HDR or XDR versus standard dynamic range. Some people will absolutely notice and care, likely the very people who pay premiums for pro phones. Others won't, not at all, likely the people who don't. But either way, it will continue to push the technology forwards, which is also a very important job of the pro lineups. And again, to me, Personally, like I said before, the single biggest advantage of 120 hertz will be the ability to watch HDR movies at 24 hertz, the frame rate nature and Hollywood intended. And the first movie I'm gonna watch is Avengers Infinity War because it's one of my favorites and because I just got this rad poster for it from Displate. You saw me order it a couple of videos ago. I went through all the cool licensed and original art they have available. I scoured all the Star Wars, all the robots, all the animals, before hitting up the Avengers and settling on this one right here, 
the one I unboxed in the last video, Avengers, Infinity War, Thanos. Like all of this plate's work, it's printed right on metal, like wall art for the 21st century. To mount the bigger XL ones like this, you start off with a stencil so you know where to place each of the four quadrants. They give you the tape to stick it up with and everything. Then you clean the wall with the enclosed cloth and let it dry. Then place the mounting paper on the wall, peel off the backing and let it stick. Next, it's magnet time. Peel, press, done. Lastly, you place the metal posters on the magnets on the wall. This plate even includes a little leveler right in the box so you can make sure they're perfectly level. If they combine, like Voltron, you have your bigger poster. If you get a series of smaller individual ones, you can space them out and rearrange them however you want, whenever you want, which is just beyond cool. The only thing better is that right now, you can hit up the link in the description and save 30% off displates of your very own. Thanks Displate and thanks to all of you for your support. So OLED across the iPhone 12 line, made possible by the good enough for Apple and Samsung, inexpensive enough for less expensive phones, BOE process. And maybe, just maybe, 120 hertz or up to 120 hertz displays in the iPhone 12 Pro models, made possible by a confluence of technologies that let the frame rates ramp up when apps can take advantage of the speed, but ramp back down when they don't need it. Of course, we'll have to wait for the fall to see how this all plays out. But for now, hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, ring that bell so we can hang out and chat in the comments for the first hour right after the video goes live, and then hit up those comments and let me know. What do you think of OLED and 120 Hertz? Want them, need them in your life, or couldn't care less about any of them? You just want a great phone at a great price. Thanks for watching and for more on the iPhone 12, check out this playlist right here or here. One of these here. See you next video.